So, welcome to the APL Seeds 2024. And, well, let's start this right off the bat. And you've seen the schedule. You've signed up for this. So, let's go. I'm going to first say a little bit about what APL really is. Um, but I'm going to preface that with what APL is not, because there are some myths out there about an um, APL. I'd like to dispel the one that I think that is the most common is people's immediate reaction when they uh, see APL code. And that is APL is unreadable. Um, I will beg to disagree, but uh, let me try to prove it to you instead. And then you'll have some ammunition too if you speak with others. So uh, when people say APL is unreadable, they think of something like this. Uh, it's just a garble of symbols. And, and in a sense, it's true. If you don't know what these symbols mean, then it's unreadable. Um, and uh, as a bit of a devil's advocate, let me contrast this with something that I'm sure most people will find perfectly readable, which is traditional mathematical notation. You see, that's not a garble of strange symbols at all. Or maybe it is. So the point here is that readable, well, it depends on whether or not you've learned how to read. And while it's true that APL reads nothing like, say, an English or a French text, um, there are many other ways to write for humans. And for example, this one, which to me personally looks like a lot of strange symbols. I can make out the symbols. I can see that some of them are like constitute holes and they, yeah, I guess they could be a text. And there are like a hundred million people out there for whom this is perfectly normal and legible, um, but not me. So it's unreadable because I haven't learned how to read it, but I'm sure I could with some effort. And in itself, the writing system doesn't seem to be very problematic. You might recognize this one. This one is a ways worse to me because I can't readily identify the units of the writing. Things kind of blur together. And in contrast, say things like APL or mathematical notation or the Thai script that's right above and form neat little units. Still, that doesn't prevent like a thousand million people from using Arabic script and I'm sure they considered it perfectly readable. Another um, thousand million people and use and Chinese script, which in its natural form even goes in a different direction than what we are used to. Well, Arabic goes from right to left and not from left to right. The Chinese traditionally goes from top to bottom. Uh, we can see what constitutes characters. Um, but if you haven't learned how to read it, then I'm sure it's it's very unreadable. And so why am I taking this up? And because APL becomes readable and useful in its compact expression of ideas uh, when put in contrast with other programming languages, especially. Um, the funny thing is that people don't react the same way to other programming languages, but maybe that's something to do with the formatting. So here's some code in a very commonly used programming language. Um, this example is JavaScript. And when I show people this and say, uh, you think this is readable? Then they usually protest and say, yeah, well, we would never write it like that. Um, so how would we write it? Well, the, the first step would be to break things up. So this is just one long continued line. And if we well take out some repeated elements of an expression, and give them a name that helps a little bit, but still most people would agree that this is not how you write JavaScript. In fact, people tend to write it um, split up into smaller pieces. 
something like this. You have gone with some really, really short names to make it fit, but uh, you get the idea. And even with things like this, I've tried writing code like this and having people approach it. Well, why is it squished together like that? People like to have more spacing. It's essentially the same code, but apparently the extra spacing helps on what people consider uh, readable. There's obviously the same amount of information, but I guess it gives some anchor points for the eyes. And this is not to, uh, to bash JavaScript or, or other programming language at all, but uh, I think a lot of the examples people see for APL are so-called one-liners or squish together code, code golf, the sport of writing your code as short as possible that can give the wrong impression. We can definitely write APL in a spaced out piecemeal way um, as well. And then, well, you have a contrast of some symbols, but there are also some recognizable elements. So here, for example, uh, we have plus addition. And while it does use the same symbol in most programming languages, then in order for it to be used as a function, like here we're using it with a reduction, which really means just combining a lot of numbers with a plus. And then we have to wrap it uh, with this extra syntax. And the APL just neatly gets rid of that. And I don't think you can really argue with it a statement that it's easier to re just read a plus symbol than to read this whole thing that's highlighted here that does exactly the same thing. And then an APL is willing to use proper symbols for things. So don't need to resort to using an asterisk for multiplication. You can use a proper multiplication sign. Now what people consider readable usually is just the wordiness. A APL doesn't use English words, although that's a bit of a an interesting thing because most people in the world don't speak English or primarily speak some other language. And why is it really that we prioritize English like this in programming? Also, we use symbols a lot in our daily lives and especially when it comes to things like mathematics and even programming. Um, so what if we give symbols to various parts of and what we're doing. And that's exactly what APL does. So here we can see how reduce, uh, this idea of inserting a function between elements in a collection uh, is just denoted with a slash. And division is using the proper division symbol as we can see on the last line. And another small thing here that APL tries to not really hide, but like subjugate the details that you don't really need to know about. And we can see that the reduction in APL doesn't need a specification of an initial value. When you add, you, you start off with one and you keep adding to that. When you multiply, you start off with, sorry, you start with zero and keep adding to that. When you start to multiply, you start off with one and you keep multiplying extra numbers to that. And APL can figure that out by itself. We can also see here, and the slice one, that means we're chopping off the first element. APL uses a down arrow, which is trying to indicate a drop. That's what we call it. We, we drop one element. So we send it down. Like when you drop something, it falls down. And then and we have something we can recognize here. We have the fec function, which is actually a factorial. And we're applying it here on x minus one. We have to wrap that here with the with the e minus one on the left that's the same thing and the mapping means applying it to every element that's what those two small dots are doing so in in apl but this is the same parts here now you can already begin to read a lot of this okay this whole thing here is the definition of a factorial that's actually built into APL. So we can just write that with the symbol that is used in mathematics as well, even though we use it slightly differently in APL. And then uh, if we look at all these definitions, we have the sum, the product, the factorial, then they're only used one or two times. And I've given them the absolute shortest names that are reasonable to give to anything with just three letters each. And even so, all of them are um, 
significantly longer than their definitions. And the name, even though it might be unambiguous with some means, maybe PRD is not so ambiguous or FAC for that sake, and whereas the actual definition is, of course, completely unambiguous because that's just that's what it is. There's really no reason why we shouldn't just take all these definitions and stick them into their respective places. And uh, if we remove the extra spaces that we got, then wait, isn't that? Uh, it is. That is that original formula that I showed you that people might claim is unreadable. And I will venture to say that if you've been following along in what I said, you can actually read this formula in APL right now. So I think um, we have established that APL is quite readable. Now, that doesn't answer what it is, just that it's readable. It's a language of some sort. Specifically, it's an array-oriented programming language. And it uses symbols. And we use these symbols um, in APL much like we use symbols between each other in our daily lives, and we don't even think about that. Some symbols you're very used to from mathematics, from school, like plus and times. But if you're doing any music, then you're also dealing with lots and lots of symbols that in themselves, just like plus and times, don't actually convey anything about what it is they represent. The musical symbols kind of show something relative, some relative relations, but they don't actually map in any way to the real physical manifestation that they are trying to represent. And some symbols that you instantly recognize are even more abstract. There's really nothing about these shapes that indicates speech or thought, but you immediately got the idea, maybe even more so than if I'd written the words speech and thought. And when we use little icons on our phones and so on, we'll tend to use picture icons, not word icons. Some human languages even are somewhat inspired by using symbols. So these are Chinese symbols for net, like a, a network or possibly like a fisherman's net and a field, like a, a farmer's field. You can see the, the shapes match that. And APL just goes and takes that idea and continues it. So we met this down arrow, which means to drop elements. And I really think that's a better symbolism than slice. Although slice can be used for additional things, but still. And then by analogy, if we remove elements with down arrow, then we would keep elements, take elements with the up arrow. That's the kind of symbols that APL uses. This one means to reflect over a vertical axis, like something looking into a mirror and gets reflected the other way. And with that told, you can probably guess what this one does. So it's symbolic, it's array oriented. What do we mean by that? It means it works on entire collections of data at once. So for example, we can add two to an entire list of numbers and get the result for that. This is perfectly adequate for a human to communicate what it is we want, but in many programming languages, and you would have to write something extra to accomplish something like this, not just saying, I want to add a number to a list of numbers. And then we had that uh, down arrow to mean drop. Well, it takes away the leading elements and the up arrow then by analogy takes leading elements and keeps them and discards everything else. I said this reflects over this indicated axis. So we can see how we get our list of numbers in reverse. And what does array oriented mean? It means we can operate on in entire multidimensional collections of uh, data at once. So here we have a table with uh, three rows and three columns, and we can use that same symbol to reflect it horizontally. We can also remove from it, we can drop two. So in this case, it doesn't mean two elements, it means two rows. 
we can even in one go remove two rows and one column and reflect it over diagonal if we wish to do that. And it's, it's actually this kind of operation, it's these kind of things that we can do, this vocabulary gives us in our hands of working on whole arrays um, symbolically that is an inspiration for the APL logo. Those white lines going through, they're intended to show that we have this three by three uh, collection of things that we can then manipulate. So with that, what can APL do for you? Uh, well, you can use it in communication in all kinds of things. And today we're going to give you some examples of that. For APL research, just want to give you a pre brief um, preview of what we are going to uh, to see. Some of the things we're going to, to, uh, to some, uh, sorry, some things, some of which we're going to see and hear more about. Um, APL can be used to model uh, crystals forming and manipulated, manipulating them. Um, it has been used for simulating sea and air currents and even building an entire uh, boating simulator. And, and it can be used for things like um, 3D modeling of particle interactions. All of these have in common that you can't just download some package that does it because they need bespoke formulas. It's not a done deal. It's people tweaking things, tweaking the formulas, playing around with it and figuring out um, how they can model things and so that they get the results that uh, they want or they can make new conclusions about it. So there's important that um, the formulas themselves have an, a sense of um, being like, like clay that can be modeled in your hands. For academia, and APL can be used to teach statistics, and we've got one of the people doing that with us. We have uh, people who deal with quantum physics using APL to uh, describe those things. And it can also just be used in regular math education. And uh, we've seen examples of a uh, math teacher using APL for that. It can give new insights to uh, students on how things actually work. But this is all theoretical stuff. APL is also used in, should we say, the real world of actually getting things done. So we have people who uh, can make order out of the chaos in um, retail industry, how much they need to, to buy and keep and in stock and so on. We have uh, people using APL to get an overview of interactions and then correlations between various measurements in healthcare so that we can uh, give more appropriate treatments and medications and so on, or even advice and behavioral advice. And, and people make proper applications. They can put them in the cloud, run them as web services, as microservices, as standalone desktop uh, applications. There are many uh, possibilities and we have tools and for all of that. And then of course, you can have fun with APL. That's an, a common thing to see as well. So we have APL enthusiasts who after a career of using APL to do, should we say real work, and simulate music instruments from scratch, form, making waveforms and uh, illustrating uh, the tones being played and, and experimenting with the various sounds. It can be used to uh, generate images in mathematics. Um, I've even seen people picking up stray radio waves and analyzing them and doing some math on that and see if they can actually get uh, the signal out from the, uh, the otherwise encoded radio waves. So you can definitely have fun uh, with APL. And in the words in, of somebody else, 
don't take my word for it. Um, take other people's word for it. These are some quotes from uh, a chat room on the Stack Exchange. And uh, I can pretty much promise you, if you spend a little bit of effort on this, then you will have fun with APL as well.